welcome to the seminar, Reducing Dark Cutting Beef. My name is Heather Bruce, and I am the Associate Professor of Carcass and Meat Science at the University of Alberta. In today's webinar, we're going to cover what is dark cutting beef, why are we concerned about dark cutting beef, what are the risk factors for production of dark cutting beef, the results of the Canadian National Beef Audit, and comparing those results to the United States National Beef Audit, recommendations for preventing dark cutting beef, and some references from the scientific literature that would provide more information on the incidence of dark cutting beef and managing its frequency of occurrence. First of all, what is dark cutting beef? A carcass is considered to cut dark if the ribeye muscle that after 10 minutes being exposed to air by being ribbed with a knife, if that muscle is a dark red color. This particular definition is included in the Canada Gazette Part 2 Volume 135 Number 21 and it can be found in the 20th September 2001 edition. The difference between dark cutting ribeye and normal colored ribeye is exhibited in the picture on the right hand side of the slide. As you can see, the color of the beef muscle in the ribeye steak at the top of the picture is much darker than that exhibited by the bright red normal colored ribeye at the bottom of the picture. The dark color of the ribeye at the top of the picture is a major quality defect in beef and for that reason those carcasses that exhibit a ribeye muscle that is that color or darker are usually graded Canada B4. The Canada B4 grade was in fact formulated to capture cars that had this major defect. Why are we concerned? Beef producers are concerned about the incidence of dark cutting beef because a carcass being graded Canada B4 can in fact reduce the animal value by up to $300 per head. This reduction in value can cost the Canadian industry approximately $1.4 million per year in lost product potential value. The incidence of dark cutting in Canada is approximately 2% per year. And so over time, one can see how the $1.4 million can add up, particularly over many, many decades. Dark cutting beef tends to occur in clusters, which means that it can be restricted to particular shipments of cattle or to cattle coming from one particular farm or feedlot. And because of that, the incidence of this particular quality defect can be financially damaging or in fact devastating to producers that have this occur in their animals. And so it is of significant concern to the industry not just because of its financial implications but because it has a big effect on the producers or feedlotters that are involved. We are also concerned about dark cutting beef because it, do, does, it does present a major quality defect. Dark cutting beef has been singled out first and foremost because of its color. Its abnormal color causes concern amongst consumers as they think that the beef comes from an old animal. The concentration and therefore the color of beef increases with animal age. There is more myoglobin and more iron in beef from cattle that are old and so this 
misperception has occurred over time. However, the beef that is classified as dark, firm, and dry in the Canadian system comes from animals that are under 30 months of age. And so increased concentrations of myoglobin and iron are not the cause. Dark cutting beef is also not just dark, but it is very firm to the touch and dry to the touch because this particular meat holds on to water very firmly. The protein in the meat is not denatured, and so it hangs on to water fairly strongly, giving the meat a firm and dry touch. The, there are two major concerns with dark cutting beef. The first being that its pH value, which is a measure of how many hydrogen ions are contained in the meat muscle, is higher than normal. The pH of the surface of the dark cutting meat is often above 6, which is much higher than the pH of normal beef, which is between 5.4 and 5.7. A pH of 6 or greater allows bacteria to grow on the surface, which can discolor the meat or cause palatability problems or even cause health and safety concerns. Also, if the meat pH is between 5.8 and 6, the beef will be much tougher than when the pH of the meat is below 5.7 or above 6.0. Producers or meat retailers are not usually concerned about pH value of 6.0 or higher because the meat actually can be very tender at pH values in this range. However, abattoirs do not sort dark cutters based upon the pH as they are unable to do so. Therefore, there is no sorting based upon tenderness in, in the meat system. As a result, all dark cutters are considered to be defective and their value is reduced accordingly. The risk factors for dark cutting include anything that depletes the energy in the muscle. Energy in muscle is stored as glycogen, which is long chains of glucose. Glucose is used by the muscle to produce adenosine triphosphate or ATP and then ATP is used to support many different functions in the muscle. After death, even though the animal is in fact no longer alive, the muscle continues to try to maintain its normal processes and so ATP is used by the muscle within the first few hours of death. The use of ATP by the muscle produces hydrogen ions, and it is these hydrogen ions that increase in concentration during the time post-mortem that in fact contribute to the reduction in pH in the muscle. Therefore, anything that reduces the amount of glycogen in the muscle before death will in fact reduce the ability of the muscle to to reduce its pH value. Physical stress or psychological stress in animals prior to their death can in fact deplete the glycogen in the muscle. Physical stresses can include heifers that are exhibiting estrus activity which can lead to a sexually active group that can, in fact, deplete their glycogen through their physical activity. Bulls also can, in fact, have an increased incidence of dark cutting because they, too, can be active and display aggressive behavior. Mixing unfamiliar cattle is not recommended as there is quite a bit of physical activity related to the reestablishment of a social hierarchy. Also, long transport times with inadequate rest at the destination avatar have been related to 
the inc increased incidence of dark cutting. As the strain and the stress of transport and maintaining the balance during the transport time can in fact deplete glycogen. Most recently, hormonal growth promotants have been identified as potential risk factors for dark cutting. First of all, the manufacturer's recommended withdrawal times should be adhered to, so no animals should be sent to abattoir at fewer than 100 days of payout time on the implant, as that may increase the incidence of dark cutting. Growth promotants can, in fact, reduce the glycogen in muscle because the glycogen is being used to provide energy for protein synthesis during growth. And so once the withdrawal time has occurred, protein synthesis can return to a normal rate and glycogen can be replaced. Steers treated with combination synthetic testosterone and estrogen at feedlot entry have also been shown to have a higher incidence of dark cutting, whereas heifers treated with estrogen implants only at feedlot entry have shown an increase in dark cutting. Reimplantation with or serial use of growth promotants can also increase the incidence of dark cutting in cattle. High environmental temperatures or very warm days can also uh, contribute to the increase in dark cutting. If the environmental temperature is greater than 35 degrees Celsius, cattle may mod modulate or reduce their intake of feed, which can lead to some depletion of muscle glycogen. Also, daily high and low environmental temperatures greater than 5.6 degrees Celsius apart have in fact also been related to the incidence of dark cutting. Low nightly temperatures w combined with high daily temperatures can increase the amount of shivering that cattle experience in the evening and shivering to keep warm is fueled by muscle glycogen and so glycogen depletion can occur when there are cool nightly temperatures. The Canadian National Beef Audit conducted a cooler audit where in each cooler one certified grader and one technician graded at least 10% of the carcasses that passed through the line for a total of 16,711 carcasses assessed. During the assessment, Canadian grading standards were used, and the data collected included the length and width of the ribeye muscle, estimated muscle score, fat class, the marbling score, so it was indicated to be either prime, triple A, double A, single A, or devoid of marbling, whether there were dark cutters, the stagginess, the conformation, the yellow, whether there's yellow fat and the carcass age. Also during the audit where it was operationally feasible, the actual ribeye areas were taken at the grading site. The results of the National Beef Audit indicated that there was an overall increase in the proportion of dark cutters. 1998-1999 audit showed that there was a, a incidence of dark cutting of 0.84 percent, whereas in 2010-2011 audit an incidence of 1.28 percent was found, meaning that the incidence of dark cutting in Canada has increased over the 10 years since the 1998-1999 audit was conducted. The incidence continues to be monitored in the United States of America, however, their audit also indicated that they found that there was an increase in dark cutting carcasses. And they increased from 2.3 in 2001 to 3.2% in 2012. The United States audit also showed that 57.5% of the dark cutting occurred between September and February of each year suggesting that 
the daily high and low temperatures again significant effects in their population. As a result of the research into dark cutting in cattle, the following recommendations have been formulated. First of all, handling of cattle prior to shipping to the abattoir should be minimized. Any handling may contribute to the reduction of glycogen in their muscles and if the cattle are unable to rest adequately after the handling, this may increase their incidence of dark cutting. Do not mix unfamiliar cattle just prior to slaughter, as activity related to re-establishing the social hierarchy will definitely deplete muscle glycogen. And again, there may not be adequate time for the cattle to rest and replete their glycogen in their muscles prior to slaughter. Minimizing the impact of the environmental temperature is recommended by providing shelter at night when the temperature declines. In order to prevent shivering or reduce shivering, which will deplete the glycogen in the muscle. At the entry into the feedlot, steers would do best to receive estrogen implants only, whereas heifers should receive a combination of an androgen and estrogen. Also, steers should be the only type of cattle re-implanted, as heifers do not do well in terms of their incidence of dark cutting if they are re-implanted. Steers, if re-implanted, should receive an estrogen implant and again reconsider re-implanting heifers prior to harvest. I hope that you have found this webinar on the incidence of dark cutting in cattle to be helpful. Additional references are supplied on this slide. The references from the Journal of Animal Science are available free online at the Journal of Animal Science site. The reference from Meat Science, however, will have restricted access, and so please feel free to contact me at the University of Alberta should you require information from this particular reference. I thank you for your in interest in the dark cutting of beef, and again, please feel free to contact me or the Beef Cattle Research Council should you require further information.